Hey there, here we go into lesson two, where we're going to dive into the calculus of parametric equations. So what is the calculus of parametric equations? Well, I've got this quick message here for you, which says, as we've done, we will do again. So parametric curves, they've got tangent lines, they've got rates of change, they've got an area under and above the curve, it's got everywhere. It's got local and absolute maximums and minimums, or maximum minima, it's got horizontal and vertical tangents, and the list goes on. So basically, all the concepts that you've done in the past, they will be revisited again. And they're going to make some sense with what you know from your calculus one or AB part of calculus experience. So we're going to find derivatives and integrals, and we're going to interpret their meanings like normal. In other words, same concepts, different kinds of, and I put the word functions there, but different kinds of curves. So let's dive. Let's do this. So keep that normal mindset here. We're given the set of equations, and get used to them, because we're going to be using them a lot in the next few videos. And it says x of t is 2t squared minus 1. y of t is equal to 1 third t cubed minus t. OK, so what is that all about? Well, what we've got here is we've got find dx dt equals, or at, t equals 2. So that notation is a little bit different. So dx dt at t equals 2 means find the derivative of x of t at 2. Some people write that as x prime of 2. That's the same as well. So now how do we deal with this? Well, I take the derivative. So dx dt, or x prime of t, using different notation, is equal to 4t. That's not so bad. And so what we've got from here is I'm just going to plug in 2 into this. So that's x prime of 2, which is equal to 4 times 2 or 8. So what does that mean? What that means is the rate at which we're moving in the x direction as time moves on at time t equals 2 is equal to 8, meaning we're moving to the right. That's it. We're moving to the right. So that's all that that means. We are moving to the right at time t equals 2. Huh. Okay. Well, why does this make sense? Well, if we take a look at this curve right here, it kind of loops around and then goes up like this. So here's the graph of the curve. And if you graph it out, it goes from right to left and then left to right. Well, at time t equals 2, if you plug in 2, you get the point, let's see, 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8 minus 1 is 7. And then if you plug in 2 here, you're going to get 8 thirds minus 2 is 2 thirds. So that's 7 and 2 thirds. Uh, so that's somewhere roughly right around here, right? Because that's 6, so 7 and 2 thirds. So that's like roughly right around here-ish, ish. Right? So we're moving to the right. That's why it makes sense. The curve's going off to the right. X prime, positive. That's it. Not so bad. So it's what you've always known. If X prime is positive, we're moving to the right. Now dy dt at t equals 2, we need to find y prime of t. So again, that's the same as y prime of t. And so I find y prime, which in this case is equal to 3 times 1 third is just well, 1. And then you get t squared minus 1. You're taking the derivative like you always have. It's no different. And we're going to plug in 2. So y prime of 2, or dy dt at t equals 2, is equal to 2 squared minus 1, which is 3. So what does my answer represent? It represents the up and down movement. And in this case, we are moving up at a rate. So at t equals 2, at a rate of 3. Why does that make sense? Well, again, if the derivative is positive, and the derivative in this case is referring to just the y motion, then we're moving up. And again, we took a look at the point, we took a look at the motion. Here we're moving up and to the right. So we're moving up at a rate of 3. We're moving to the right at a rate of 8. Interesting. All right, so now the next problem says find dy dx at t equals 2. So how do you find dy dx? Well, dy dx is actually equal to dy dt, or y prime of t, over x prime of t which would be dx dt. Not so bad at all. And that would be at t equal to 2. And again, you could look at this as y prime of 2, just showing you the different notation, over x prime of 2. And what that's going to be equal to, well, let's think about this. We already know what y prime of 2 is. We found it before. It's 3. We found that from the last slide. And two slides ago, x prime of 2 was 8. So to do this, you literally just find y prime and x prime and plug in t equals 2. Not that bad at all. So what does my answer represent? This is the slope of the tangent line. So the slope of the tangent line. I'll just say tan line. At t equal to 2. 
And that is 3 eighths, which again makes sense. We're roughly, again, when you plugged in 2, we're roughly at 7. And then roughly at, I think it was 2 thirds, so 7 and 2 thirds, roughly here, right around there. And if you look at your slope of your tangent line, it's not that steep. So we're going over 8 and up 3, where we have a rise of 3 and a run of 8. That's it. Why does it make sense? Look at the curve. It's not that steep of a tangent line. All right, so let's keep rocking and rolling. This now says, find the equation of the line tangent to the curve described by these parametric equations. We're going to switch it up to at t equals 3. All right, so for the equation of a tangent line, just like before, as it's always been, that's been the, the really preeminent message here, is it's going to be like we've been doing, is y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. So if you're looking at these problems and thinking, wait a second, I've done all this stuff before. Uh, yeah, yeah, have. it's the same stuff again and again. And that's pretty sweet, actually, hopefully comforting for you. So we need the slope at 3. We need the point at t equals 3. So let's find the point first. So I need x of 3, comma y of 3. I need the x value and the y value at 3. So what's that going to be? Well, that's equal to very easy plugging things in. 2 times 3 squared. 3 squared is going to be hmm, 9 times 2 is 18. Minus 1 is 17. So that's the point 17 when we plug in 3. We plug in 3 here. 3 cubed is 27 times 1 third is 9. Minus 3 is 6. So that's the point 17, 6. So that's roughly here, 17, 6, right there. So that's t equals 3. Now the question is, what's the slope there, now that we've got the point? So you got to figure out the point by plugging in the time into both x and y and the slope. So let's find y prime over x prime. So we need dy, uh, let's see, dy dt over dx dt at t equals to 3. So let's find what each of those are. So I'm going to write those underneath there. y prime and t is very easy to find. We found it before. We'll find it again. 3 times 1 third is 1. And then you get t squared minus the derivative of t is just 1. And so now this is going to be x prime of t, which is just 4t. So to find this, we plug in 3 into each of the functions. That'd be y prime of 3 and x prime of 3, those functions being the derivatives. Not so bad. So y prime of 3 is 3 squared is 9 minus 1 is 8. x prime of 3, 3 times 4 is 12. So we get 8 twelfths, which simplifies, if you really want to, to 2 thirds, which makes sense here. If you take a look at this line, it's really not that steep. Right? It's not quite a slope of 1, a slope of 2 thirds. So you got your slope, you got your point. y minus 6, there's your y value, equals the slope, 2 thirds, there it is, times x minus 17. So are parametric equations any different than just our normal y equals x rectangular equations that we're used to? No, not at all. We just have to separate both finding x prime and y prime to basically do your rise over your run. Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty neat. And so just to kind of round it out, we're going to go over why is it that dy dx equals dy dt over dx dt. Well, taking a look at any random curve here, let's say that this is the curve represented by two parametric equations, x of t and y of t. Then what we know is the rise and the run, well, as we saw before, is dy dt. That's how much we're going up and down. Remember, everything's separated here in parametric land. So how we're moving up and down is dy dt. How we're moving left and right is a little slanted there, is dx dt. So if I take the rise and I divide it by the run, I'm going to get the slope of this line at an instant. And that's what we want. So dy dt over dx dt ends up equaling out to dy dx for that reason. That's rise over run at an instant. All right, that's it. So a little quick introduction into what dy dt means. It's moving up and down. dx dt is moving left and right. And when you combine them, you get the slope of the tangent line. So that's all. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Until then, be well. Peace.